Welcome to our course on sparse representations. We start our presentation with an attempt to define the prime objective of this field. As you will shortly see, even such a simple question faces some difficulties. So what this field is all about? The answer depends on whom you ask. In a typical conference which gathers the researchers in this field, you could meet a variety of scientists, engineers working in different disciplines, pure and applied mathematicians, statisticians, computer scientists, physicists, and even psychologists due to the close connection between our field and brain research. Why am I mentioning all this? Because I should clarify that in this course I will present my own view of this field as a signal and image processing practitioner. So again, what this field is all about? My answer is the introduction of a new transform for signals and its study. We are all familiar with the concept of transforms and well aware of their importance. One could not imagine the fields of signal and image processing without the Fourier, the DCT, the wavelets and the PCA. Well, in this course we will introduce a new and very effective transform. As we will see, it draws its structure from past ideas, but it brings a fresh and new flavor of treatment to data. This is the essence of the field of sparse representations. Let's recall the idea of transforming a signal. We start by considering the ocean of all possible invertible transforms, enabling perfect recovery of the signal from its representation. Since this ocean is just too deep and too cold, we focus on a subset of these, the linear transforms. Those are often described in a matrix vector form. Observe that the relation d alpha equals x stands for the inverse transform from the representation back to the signal. Oftentimes, even this is not sufficiently simple and we limit our view to unitary matrices for which the inversion is replaced by a simple conjugate transpose. And if this is not simple enough, we may introduce structure into the transform in order to reduce the amount of computations from n squared to n log n, as indeed done by most of the transforms we have mentioned. When dealing with images, video, or data volumes, separability is yet another appealing simplifying option. Let's now bring in another ingredient into our story, redundancy, that is, using a representation that is longer than the signal. We can have such a redundancy while preserving the linearity of the inverse transform. In this equation, the matrix D is now rectangular with more columns than rows, and alpha is longer than X. What about the forward transform in this case? Could we suggest a linear form for it? The answer is positive. We can multiply X by the pseudo inverse of D in order to get the representation. Under these definitions, if one starts from X, transforms it to alpha and then transforms it back, we get X, implying that we get the desired invertibility. All this brings us back to our story. We shall keep the structure and linearity of the inverse transform intact and revisit the choice of the forward transform of computing alpha from X. Thinking in terms of a linear system of equations where D and X are known, there are infinitely many possible solutions for alpha. Among all these, we shall seek the sparsest of all solutions, the one with the fewest non-zeros. Clearly, seeking the sparsest solution implies that the forward transform is highly non-linear operation. The field of sparse and redundant representations is all about defining clearly this transform, solving various theoretical and numerical issues related to it, and showing how to use it in practice. Sounds great, don't you think? Well, actually it sounds rather boring. Why would anyone care about a new transform? This brings us naturally to a different view of this field, which we discuss next.